Hi, I'm Danielle. And I'm Anna, and we're with Ocean Connectors. We're here at the San Diego Bay National Wildlife Refuge for our bird and habitat study field trip. Let's go join the rest of our group. Welcome to the San Diego Bay National Wildlife Refuge, right here in Imperial Beach, California. Do you know what a refuge is? A refuge is a safe and protected place for plants and animals. Refuge in Spanish is refugio. Signs like this are posted at entrances to wildlife refuges. There are always important rules that we need to follow when we visit any refuge. Number one, make sure you leave all natural objects like stones, feathers, and flowers where you find them. Do not touch any wild animals or insects. Make sure you stay on marked pathways. Be respectful to other visitors and the animals and plants in the area. And most importantly, make sure you clean up all your trash. Trash can be a really big problem. Do you know why? Many animals mistake it for food and eat it. This can make them sick or even die. So please be careful to never leave any trash behind when you explore the outdoors. The bike path going through the refuge is called the Bayshore Bikeway. This bike path extends for 24 miles all the way from Coronado to downtown San Diego. This bikeway is open to the public so you can ride on it anytime. Do you see the river flowing through the area? This river is called the Otai River and it connects all the way to the ocean. The big white mounds you see in the distance look kind of like mountains of snow, but it's something else. Can you guess what it might be? It is salt! Salt that was taken out of these ponds just behind the Otai River. The salt company moves the water from pond to pond and lets the water evaporate in order to collect the salt. If you look all around, you can see lots of plants. Many of the plants you see in this area were planted by students just like you. You will get a chance to help plant some new plants in this area today. All of the plants we put in will help restore this habitat. So since 2008, the Fish and Wildlife Service has working with Ocean Connectors out here to bring students from National City to restore coastal sage scrub habitat. So all this area that you guys see here within the fences have been planted by students since 2008 to restore the habitat. Before we get started, it is important to remember that all animals are important to a habitat. Some of us may be scared of bugs and bees and spiders, but each one has a role to play in the ecosystem. Be sure to try and respect all living things. As you turn to your right, you'll see some pretty yellow flowers going around the Otai River. But don't be fooled, these are called chrysanthemum, and they are invasive. Invasive plants are usually bad. They are weeds that do not belong in this area, and they steal nutrients, water, and sunlight from the other plants around them. They tend to grow out of control and take over all the open space. You may also know invasive plants by a common name they are called, weeds. Native plants are the plants that naturally occur in this area, are from here, and are good for the habitat. Native in Spanish is nativa. To help make sure the native plants will grow big and strong, we will be removing the plants that do not belong in this area. Before we get started, it is important to make sure we have the proper protection. What can we wear to help us stay safe while working with the plants? Once we all have our gloves, let's figure out what plants we should be removing. Remember the invasive chrysanthemum we talked about earlier? The yellow flowers it has can be tricky because they look very similar to yellow flowers of the native plant California sunflower. 
but the California sunflower has a dark center and the chrysanthemum has a yellow center. If this invasive plant has not yet bloomed and has no flowers, it is easy to tell it apart by the leaves, which look very similar to cilantro. Let's learn a little bit more about the invasive plants here out on the refuge. Chrysanthemum was brought over by Asian immigrants because it tastes very delicious in stews and soups, and also the flowers are made into tea. The whorehound was brought over by European immigrants, and if you've ever had a cough drop before, that's what whorehound is used for. It's used for medicines. Ice plant is from South Africa, and it's a beautiful decorative plant. However, it takes up a lot of water. If you look closely, you'll get to see that the water is stored on the outside and it kind of looks like bubble wrap. If you're ever not sure if the plant you're looking at is a good plant or a bad plant, an invasive or a native, make sure to ask before removing it. When we're pulling weeds, make sure to pull them out by the roots so that they do not grow back. Some of these plants can be really tough to pull out, but you can do it. I like that we get to be outside and it's a win-win because we get to help nature and stuff. That's cool. And do you think you learn better hands-on or like writing in a book? Uh, hands-on, definitely. After about only 10 minutes, we already have quite a pile. How does your team know how many weeds we pulled out? Well, we can easily calculate this by figuring out the volume of your pile. Time for some math practice. The equation for volume is length times width times height of an object. So first we must pat the pile down into a rectangle or cube shape before taking the measurements. We will use a meter stick to measure and use centimeters to be more accurate. Look at how many weeds we pulled out in such a short amount of time. Now that we have removed the invasive plants, it's time to plant some natives. Go and pick out your favorite. Do all of the native plants look the same or different? There are many different types of plants that grow in one area. Having lots of different species in an area is called having biodiversity. And this helps all of the plants and animals survive better. Let's take a look at some of the plants we'll be planting today. This is bladder pod. Bladder pod is a really cool plant. Take a look at these actual pods. When it's time for the seeds to disperse, the pod explodes and scatters the seeds everywhere. And if you rub the leaves gently to smell it, you'll experience something very unpleasant. Most people do not like the smell of bladder pod. Ew. Next up is black sage. Rub the leaves and smell it. Notice the pleasant aroma from the black sage. See all these yellow flowers with black circles in the middle? This is California sunflower, and look at how large they grow. Next up we have California buckwheat. This plant can flower in the spring, summer, and autumn with beautiful pink, yellow, white, and cream colored flowers. A lot of bees love California buckwheat. Now this plant is California sagebrush. Notice how different this plant looks in comparison to the others. Are these normal shaped leaves? An old name for this plant is cowboy cologne. Yeehaw! Back in the day, people used to do a little dab of this plant on them to make them smell a little better. Next we have golden bush. Look closely at the leaves of golden bush. See how scraggly they look? When it is not in bloom with beautiful yellow flowers, the leaves are a good way to tell plants apart. Finally, we have white sage, one of my favorites. First, note the color of these leaves in comparison with the black sage. It's much lighter. Notice how light green it is and how it kind of looks like it's almost coated in white fuzz. Now pick up your plant, grab a shovel and some gloves, and let's get planting. You should always carry your shovel pointed downward and step carefully so you don't damage any other plants. Many of these plants were installed recently by other school groups and are still trying to grow. See the little orange cones? Those help protect small plants from herbivores like rabbits who might eat them. It also helps us see where the little baby plants are trying to grow strong. Now how do we properly plant a plant?
first, you dig a hole. Notice the shovels have flat edges on the sides. That's so you can push the shovel into the ground by stepping on it with your shoe. We will need a hole deep enough so that when you place the potted plant into the ground, the top of the plastic container is level with the ground. Once you have a deep enough hole, then we remove the plant from its container by pushing down on each side of the container, just like doing CPR. It is best to give the roots a little tickle to loosen them up before putting the plant in the ground. This helps the plant spread the roots in the ground to absorb more water. Look what we found living inside the soil of this plant! Earthworms are great for gardening. Their droppings act as fertilizer and give nutrients to the plant. They also create small tunnels underground, which helps loosen up the soil and let in more air and water for the plant to grow. Now we can fill in the hole around our plant with the leftover dirt we have. Leave a little dent around the base of the plant so the surrounding dirt is slightly higher, and then build up a little donut or wall around your plant. This donut shape that you're making is called a berm. This helps water flow towards the plant and lets it absorb more water when you're watering it. Newly transplanted plants need a lot of water to help them adjust to their new homes. By giving them lots of water, it gives them the best chance of survival. Make sure to water for at least 10 seconds. Whew, it's pretty hot out here and we've been working really hard. I think it's time for us to go take a water break. We'll see you back soon. <laughs>